buttons, and jacks. You can operate your device using the power button on the top of the device. When you turn on your device, the LED lamp on the top flashes green briefly, then blue. The blue color indicates that there is no wireless connection, Bluetooth connection via tablet or mobile phone, in the main unit of the device. If there is a wireless connection through your tablets or mobile devices, the green color flashes incessantly. The main unit of the device is powered by a lithium-ion battery and charged with a 5-volt, 2-amp charging adapter. You can charge the device's battery using the micro-USB input on the top panel. Only charge the device with the original charging adapter. If the charging adapter is lost or broken, please contact the technical service of Conrad. The button on the front of the device enables data transmission in manual search and continuation of data transmission after completion of each row in automatic search. Installing 3D Analysis Application To start working with the device, you should first download the application Conrad GR3 on your mobile device such as a tablet or phone. To do so, search Conrad GR3 on Google Play Store or App Store and install the app. After the installation is complete, the activation menu will open when you open the application. In this menu, complete the activation of your application by entering the information you are requested, such as the serial number of the device, your name, and your email address. Wireless connection to the device. After activation, you will see the main page of the application. Before you can scan with the device, you should establish a wireless connection. For wireless connection, first tap the Settings menu in the application. In the Settings menu, you must first allow some features that you need the app to use on your mobile device. In the Settings menu, go to the Permissions section. You will need to confirm both permissions. These permissions are necessary to save scan results and establish a wireless connection. This process only applies to the initial setup. Once done, you do not need to repeat it. After confirming the permissions, return to the Settings menu and open the Connection section. Tap the Scan the Devices button in this menu. The scanning process will start. The scan will be completed in a few seconds. You will see your device in the menu. If you tap on the Connect section, the connection will be established. Application Interface on the main page of the application, there are icons in the middle and bottom bar. With the scanning modes such as 3D ground scan, live scan, the icon that allow you to open recorded files, and the icon that allows you to open the settings menu. The buttons in the top bar consist of the icon that allows you to turn on your mobile device's Bluetooth, the icon that allows you to quickly connect to your GR3 device, the icon that shows the battery level of your GR3 device. When not connected, this icon is inactive. The icon that allows you to select the application interface as dark and light mode. Preparing to scan. Before collecting measurements with your device, you should consider issues that will affect your measurements. You should have information about the scanned area. You should consider information such as historical background and soil structure of the searched area. You should check the battery and charge status of your product during scanning. You should perform the search with a fully charged device. Low battery level is one of the elements that affect measurements. There should not be any high tension lines, main electric lines, cell towers, objects with high susceptibility, speakers, or objects like magnets within at least 50 meter diameter of the area measured. The person doing the scanning should not have any objects with high magnetic susceptibility on him or her. Heat, radio receivers, solar power, ground minerals, loose soil, salt, water, etc. may have negative effect on measurement results. In order to prevent your measurements from getting affected by magnetic fluctuations, it should always be performed with the north-south axis. Each search should be performed from north to south or from south to north. Using a compass to find your direction is recommended. Starting scans from the north is recommended. 
The device should be held vertically against the ground and should not be shaken. Your device's height from the ground should be between 10 cm and 15 cm, and this level of height should be maintained throughout the collection of measurements. Do not lift or lower your device during each signal measurement. At least 10 signal pulses in 10 search rows, in other words 3 meters to 3 meters, is recommended for measurement size. The point you doubt in the measurement area should remain in the center of the measurement you perform. If the metal or cavity data is placed on the sides in the graphics collected, measurement should be repeated by centering this data. Wide measurements should be collected when search is performed on an unknown area. For example, search should be performed with 20 signals and 20 rows. Be attentive to keep 30 centimeters between each signal pulse count and 30 centimeters between each search row. You should perform measurements relatively in wider areas, depending on the size of the area measured. If you are searching for large objects such as graves or rooms, you may increase the pulse intervals, for example, keeping 50 centimeters between each signal. If you are searching smaller objects, such as between 20 to 30 centimeters, you should increase the frequency of signal pulse intervals. If a buried object remains under soil for longer amounts of time, the magnetic field it will produce will be higher, and it could be detected easier. You should check the target at least twice by performing the search in the same manner. More measurements will help eliminate minerals and correct errors, if any. The more control scans performed on a potential object, the better your decision will be about whether the item is a real object. You may perform zigzag or parallel scans. If you have completed a scan line, the next one should be performed next to it. The measurement device should not be turned between rows. 3D Ground Scan To create a 3D ground scan, enter the Ground Scan menu on the main page of the application. The 3D ground scan allows you to create 3D graphics based on your scans of a specific area. Scan Mode There are two scan options in the Ground Scan feature, Automatic and Manual. In automatic scan, you do not need to tap any button to count the signal pulse, but in manual scan, you need to tap the button on the device for each signal. First, you need to select the scan type, automatic or manual. Start point. You can set your scan start point from the lower right or lower left corner. To do this, you must select the left or right start point. If you start searching from the lower left corner, you should proceed to the next scan job on your right. If you select from the bottom right corner, you should proceed to the next scan job on your left. Scanning Method You can do your scans in zigzag or parallel. In zigzag scanning, you can scan the scan sequences back and forth. In parallel scanning, the starting point of each line should be right next to the starting point of the previous line and in the same direction. You should start the scan at your start point and end it at your ending point, as shown in the graph. When the number of signal pulses entered for each row is complete, you must proceed to the next series of scans. The direction of the measurement device should not be rotated when you move to the next row. Width Enter the number of rows you want to scan according to the size of the area to be scanned, for example, 10 rows. The distance between each row should be 20 cm to 30 cm on average. Height Select how many measurement signals must be present for each row, for example, 10 measurement signals. The distance between each measurement signal should be 20 cm to 30 cm on average. The more you increase the distance, the more difficult it becomes to detect small objects. After typing all settings, you can initiate the scan by tapping the Start Scan button. In the middle of the scanning screen, you can see the immediate data that you get. If you select Manual Mode, you should tap the Start button on the front handle for each signal step. At the bottom, you can see the Stop icon that allows you to stop scanning and the Data icon that is active in manual scans. If you select Automatic Mode, after the signal step count for each row is completed, 
you will be requested to tap the Start button. You should perform this procedure for each scanning row. The active bar in the top indicates the immediate measurement severity. After you start getting data, you will see colors such as green, red, yellow, and blue according to the measurements you get. You can see all metallic objects and most objects with high magnetic effect as red, some as orange, cavities, earth fills, caves underground as blue, the earth without any changes and anomalies as green. You can see mineral soils and objects with a relatively low magnetic effect as yellow and orange colors. The application will create a preview after the entered signal's depth count and row count is completed. In this screen, you can save the obtained data or exit without saving. You should enter a file name if you want to save. You can enter a name for your scan or save it automatically under the date of the scan. You can examine this data in detail on the analysis screen. After you save the scan, you will be taken to the Files section. Live Scan Live Scan is a 2D search mode that allows you to quickly and pinpoint objects, metallic objects, spaces, structures buried underground with magnetic effect. In Live Search screen, you can see all metallic objects and most objects with high magnetic effect as red, some as orange, cavities, earth fills, caves underground as blue, the earth without any changes and anomalies as green. You can see mineral soils and objects with a relatively low magnetic effect as yellow and orange colors. You can also see the dirt level and the numerical values of the immediate measurements in the lower left corner. By tapping the calibration icon in the lower right corner, you can reset the dirt level. You should perform the calibration at a location other than the target point. Pinpointer You can use the pinpoint option to determine the exact position of the metallic or magnetic object you have detected. Before starting the scan, by touching the calibration icon, you can reset to ground level in an area different from the target point. You can see the severity of the signal and graphic bar according to the type of object in the middle. When objects with magnetic effect and metallic objects are detected, the bar will increase to the left side. The bar will be increased to the right side when structures such as cavities and caves are detected. In the sensitivity section on the left, you can increase or decrease your scan sensitivity. If you increase the scan sensitivity, the signal strength of the measurement will be more sensitive and responsive. The threshold setting on the right allows you to increase or decrease the dirt level. This allows you to block weak soil signals. With the volume button on the top right, you can switch the signal tone on or off. Opening Save Files from the main menu, tap the File section to open the scans you have saved. In the File section, you can preview or save scans. You can change the file name or delete the scan using the icons on the right of the scan data. Open the scan data you want to analyze by tapping on it. This screen allows you to analyze your data graphically and numerically. You can tap the Reset icon to return the scan to the top view. To make depth measurement in the search, you should select a proper soil type for the area you scan. It allows you to see the obtained values as numeric. You can see all data as numeric on the graph. To turn it off again, tap Data icon. With the Depth Analysis function, you can see the signal values corresponding to each frame in the data you have obtained. You can see the point depth value by choosing the soil type. You can turn on and off the red, blue, yellow, green, and light blue colors on the graph. You can perform the analysis settings. In this section, you can turn on and off the different color options and the frame on the scan. Metal Detection It may be difficult to differentiate metals and minerals at first. In some measurements, you may take the minerals as reddish in color. You can see results corresponding to metals to your left and to non-metals to your right. While metallic objects are irregular in shape, minerals are typically scattered and broad. Metallic objects are red and minerals are typically yellow or orange in color. 
The most important characteristic that separates metallic objects from minerals is the numerical difference in data between it and the soil. To see these numerical values, click on the data icon in your application. Grid lines and the numerical values will appear on the graphic. There must be at least 15 units of increase on the graphic between the soil shown in green and metallic objects shown in red. For example, if the soil reading shows 200, for it to be a metallic object, the reading must be at at least 215 in value. If the difference is just a few units, it is a mineral. If there is a big difference between soil and magnetically susceptible objects, there is a high chance it is a cheap metal. For example, if the soil level is 180 units and the magnetic object is 300 units. Metal objects that have been buried in the soil for a long time can be detected more easily. Precious metals like gold and silver can only be detected if they are buried along with metals with magnetic susceptibility. Cavity Detection Underground cavities such as tunnels, rooms, graves that are artificially constructed underground are shown in blue. If any circumstances such as deflections or embankments encountered in the cavity underground, cavity data will be shown in light blue, turquoise and light green tones. A distinct shape and a shape in line with the search structure, such as a grave, should appear on the blue area on the graphic. In this case, it should be rectangular in shape and a size that matches a grave. To see these numerical values, click on the data icon in your application. There must be at least 15 points decrease between the soil shown in green on the graph and the cavity shown in blue. For example, if soil level is 130, 115 or a smaller reading is required for cavity data. If the difference is just a few units, this data will indicate cavities formed by objects like rocks or superficial soil differences. Depth Calculation you may have approximate information about the depth of the real objects, metallic objects, or underground cavities with the measurements performed. Depth measurements may vary depending on the soil structure and the length of time the object spent underground. For point depth information, you must first select the soil type suitable for your scanning area. To do this, tap on the Soil Selection option. Select the soil type suitable for your scanning area. For example, you can choose the stony type in a stony area and the light mineral option in non-mineralized soils such as fields. If you do not have any information or assumption about the soil type, collecting depth information using more than one option will enable you to make healthier calculations. Calculating the average of light mineral option and silt option measurements will generally generate healthier results. Press the depth analysis icon at the top to open the depth data. Numbers on the graphics are in meters. Depth information for each point may be viewed within the signal square. If there are no magnetically susceptible objects or different underground anomalies are present in your measurements, depth information will be viewed as zero or very small numbers. As seen on the sample graphic, 1.26 is viewed on the metallic object. This means the depth of the metallic object according to the light mineral soil type is 1.26 meters. Data included in the depth information is generated with a specific calculation. This information gives you an approximate idea. This information on depth is not definite or binding. Settings To change the application settings, you should use the Settings menu. In this section, you can see and edit the wireless connection. The permissions that the application must use on your mobile device your license information and the application information.